Welcome to part one of this two-part on-demand webinar for Easy Agile user story maps for Jira. In part one, we'll explore the anatomy of a user story map and tips for running a story mapping session. In part two of this series, we'll explore how the elements of a story map are represented digitally in Easy Agile user story maps. We'll then dive into how teams use a story map on a weekly basis for activities such as sprint and release planning, backlog grooming, and running retrospectives. Let's get started. Let's start off by talking about the origins of user story mapping, the flat product backlog. It's one of the common practices in agile software development. We've all seen them, we've all contributed to making them bigger, and we've inevitably drowned in them. In its simplest form, a flat product backlog is a laundry list of stuff to do that will ultimately provide some form of value to your users or customers. These items should be prioritised top to bottom in the order the value will be delivered. If the team is practising Scrum, the backlog is then split into future sprints to provide an indication of what will be delivered and when. So far we know that flat backlogs represent a list of things to be done, the outputs of a team. This comes with its challenges, particularly for larger backlogs dealing with thousands of issues, and its shortcomings are best described by Jeff Patton, the gent who coined the term user story mapping. He gave the following analogy to a coworker. We spend lots of time working with our customers, trying to understand their goals, their users, and the major parts of a system that we could build to help them. Then we get down to the details, the pieces of the system we'd like to build. In his head, the system looks like a tree. The trunk is built from the goals or desired benefits that drive the system. Big branches are the users. The small branches and twigs are the capabilities they need. And then finally, the leaves are the user stories, small enough to fit into development iterations. After we've done all that work to establish a shared understanding, it's like we pull all the leaves off the tree, load them into a garbage bag and cut down the tree. That's what a flat product backlog is to me, a bag of context-free mulch. How do you pick an item from a list and deem it's the right thing that's going to provide the most value to your customers without that additional context? So the concept of a user story map was born out of a desire to create a more holistic, customer-centric overview of our products or systems. Now that we've covered the origins, I wanted to spend some time walking through what a user story map is and why a team would come together to collaboratively create one. A user story map is a visualization of the journey a customer takes with a product and includes the activities and tasks they would typically complete. Building a story map is typically conducted at the beginning of a project or product and is a collaborative activity involving the team with the sole purpose of creating a shared understanding of who our customers are and how we should focus our development of stories by providing the most value to our customers. It gives us a way to say, okay, I'm currently working on building this user story and I can visualise what piece of the customer's journey this will be directly impacting. So far, we've covered what a story map is in a general sense. And what I wanted to do now was break down the anatomy of a user story map. Then in part two of this series, we're going to bring this into the context of Jira. The backbone sits at the top of a user story map and outlines the essential capabilities the system needs to have. Creating our backbone is step one to creating our user story map. An easy question to ask ourselves when defining our backbone is, what are the high level activities a user will accomplish while using our product or system? We'll use a simple example of buying and watching a movie on an Apple TV. Here we've defined a really simple backlog which looks a little something like this. For a user to watch a movie on the Apple TV, they would have to complete the following activities. Log in, select movie, purchase movie, watch movie, and then there may be follow-up activities such as writing a review or recommending the movie to a friend, which is what we want to encourage. Once we've got the activities of the backbone identified, we will order them in chronological order of how a user will interact with our product. Following on with the Apple TV example, we will make sure the order is correct in the way our persona would go about their journey through our product. It is common to rearrange existing activities or add new activities as the discussion unfolds. This is a key benefit of the collaborative approach to building the product backlog, 
as we have shared the wisdom of an entire team involved in the discussion. Below each activity in the backbone, we create user stories as a team to flesh out how a user will actually achieve the higher level activity. Let's look at the select movie backbone activity and break it down. We may see stories for the ability to free text search, browse by genre, browse by most popular, browse by new additions, and many more. Next, we must order our stories by value to our users from most valuable to least valuable. Value may be identified through customer interviews, analytics on usage patterns, or another form of insight appropriate for your product or system. Once the team have identified their backbone, fleshed out each activity with user stories that have been ordered by value to the customer, it's time to sequence the work. The team identifies what they plan to deliver and when. What do we want to deliver in our MVP? Our V1 or our V2? Now that we've walked through the anatomy of a user story map, I'd like to share some tips we've learned around running effective user story mapping sessions. Number one, set aside a dedicated time. Getting the team and stakeholders together for an extended period of time away from keyboards can often be tricky, but it's definitely worth it. Depending on the scope of the story mapping session, you may want to take a whole day or personally, I prefer to have two three hour sessions locked in the calendar with a night in between. Having a night between the sessions breaks the sessions down into more focused and manageable time chunks and ensures the team can come back fresh with new ideas on day two, generally starting after lunch on a Monday and concluding by lunch on Tuesday. This enables the team to reflect on the story map from the first day and think of new things to add the following morning. It also gives the team a chance to get lunch after the story mapping session and informally debrief. Number two, focus. There should be one person facilitating the session, ideally someone other than the product manager so they can drive the discussion. A good practice is to involve a product manager from another team to run the session. There should be no phones or laptops out except for the facilitator. A phone or laptop stack is a good technique for doing this. As people enter the room for the story mapping session, all phones and laptops are put in a pile to avoid distractions. Number three, start with personas. Before we create a user story map, we need to have a collective understanding of who are our users. By creating customer personas before we built out our user story maps, we have a better idea of how those users will engage with the product by understanding their goals and objectives of using it. Most often, we'll start by choosing only one persona to focus on for our story mapping session. This ensures that we're building a focused and accurate customer journey tailored to our dedicated persona. Now that we have an understanding of the anatomy of a story map and some tricks on running a story mapping session, it's time to tie this all together in JIRA. What does a story map look like in JIRA? How is it composed? You might also be asking, we don't need to conduct a story mapping session every week. What do we do with the story map the rest of the time? In part two, I'll walk you through how we use the story map here at Easy Agile, not just for our user story mapping sessions, but also on a weekly basis for our retrospectives, sprint and release planning, and backlog grooming.